today we're going to do roughly almost 4,000 mile review on my WR why I changed the oil. So let's get to it. Yeah. All right. So 12 millimeter socket. Oh, there goes the oil. There goes the crush washer. <laughs> I forgot the towel. Previously, I warmed the bike up so the oil should be good and loose. But 4,000 miles almost on the bike. I think I'm like at 3,800 miles. I'm about 200 miles overdue for an oil change. The last oil change was at 600 miles. But let's talk about it. It has been. An awesome bike so far. I have no complaints about it. You know, I wish, I had just wished that Yamaha still made the WRX here in the States. Because um, I really didn't want a, a dirt bike, dirt bike. I mean, I'm not having any problems with it. And it's, it's a fun bike to ride as a dual sport. But just so much of my, my city, so much of my traveling, so much of my riding is on pavement. I have, there's like little to no dirt around here unless I want to go out to a park to ride. And I just don't want to go out there. I don't have a truck to haul the bike with. I don't have a trailer to haul the bike with. I mean, we could haul it on the back of the Equinox, but I don't have a trailer either. I mean, so, I mean, it's 1400 bucks for a decent trailer or $1,200 to sumo the bike. And my, my idea is if I was to get a dirt bike, you know, for riding trails, I would get a dedicated dirt bike. Biggest thing on the, the WR that people complain about is they say, oh, it's not good on the road. And those people review it as something that is a road bike instead of what it is, is a dual sport. And then you have the other people that says, oh, it sucks in you know, single track technical trails. Well, that's because they're reviewing it as a dedicated dirt bike and not a dual sport. I mean, it's one of those scenarios where you say, jack of all trades, master of none. That's what it is. I mean, it's it's decent on the road and it's decent in the dirt. It's not great on the road and it's not great on the dirt. But I'm happy with it as it stands. Um, it has stood up to me beating on it and getting reacquainted with a motorcycle because it's been there's a seven year hiatus between me riding super sports to me riding this dual sport. So. You know, seven years of not being on the road on a bike. So basically all it is is 12 millimeter oil plug bolt at the bottom. You know, there's a copper crush washer that goes underneath it. And then it's these three eight millimeter bolts to pull this off and pull the filter out and replace the filter. Um, and then it's 1.2 quarts of oil to fill it up. So that's pretty, it's a pretty easy maintenance day. As far as this goes, just so happens yesterday, I was at the Yamaha dealership. We went to do a QC Moto here in Springfield, and uh, they actually had a summer adventure ride and a giveaway. They gave away a little PW50 dirt bike. So while I was there, I went ahead and picked up my Yamalu my oil filter and my crush washer. Tackle well, these little guys here. I have no idea if these bolts go in in a certain order so I like to lay them on a, a ground in the order that I remember that they go in at. So when you take this guy off you need to kind of be careful because there's a rubber seal that's in here. So just make sure you don't drop that on the ground and get it dirty. But yeah, the bike has been solid. I haven't had any problems with it. I've looped it once and that was just me being stupid. Uh, trying to do a stand up, uh, standstill wheelie. And I just gave it a little too much gas when I slipped the clutch and that was all she wrote. Pretty quickly I landed on my feet and the bike just went right out from up underneath me. 
I had an issue when I swapped to these levers up here with it. The brake light would stay constantly on. So I figured out what it was is that there was not enough uh, tension to cause a spring to push it all the way out. So in the little hole that the spring goes into, I um, took a piece of a little steel rod, stock steel rod, and I trimmed it down just to, it's probably about a quarter of an inch. And it slips into the hole easily. And I put the spring on top of there, so now the spring is actually compressed more. I probably could have got a longer spring and done the same thing. Um, but I slipped that down in there with a little stop on it. And, uh, and now the spring hits it and compresses and kicks the lever all the way out. And that's because, you know, I bought some cheap Amazon, eBay, whatever, levers for the bike. And it is what it is, you know. This is going to be a mess right here. I try to get as much of the old oil out of here as possible. What I need to do is invest in some uh, rubber gloves, some shop gloves. That's what I need to do. <laughs> Don't see that happening anytime soon. There's a couple things I want to do to the bike. As everybody knows, I want to sumo it. And then I want to start kind of making it mine. A little customization here and there to make it mine. There'll probably be some painting going on. There'll be some skin changes going on. You know, after the sumo, tell tiny kid, exhaust, all those little things. But really, add up to make the mic unique to me and not like every other WR that's sitting out there. I'm going to try to make it pop, make it stand out. There's going to be some slight color changes to make it do that. Even the thing about pulling the motor and taking the swing arm off and everything. So pull it down just a bare stock and frame and go and have the frame painted, powder coated the swing arm powder coated. Um, but those are all things later down the road. I mean, I'm not in a big hurry to do any of that stuff. I like to powder coat the engine out black and then get some anodized pieces to accent that, make them really stand out. And there's a company here locally that will anodize. So I'm not stuck with, you know, the blue or red as the only options of anodizing. I can, I can take it to a local company here. I think they charge $20 per part to anodize um, parts. So we'll see what it looks like when we're all said and done. I like to put a skid plate on it. Just for looks, I mean, because once I supermoto it, I'm not really going to be banging it against things. Skid plate, radiator guard, just for looks, things to make it pop out. I haven't really decided on what color skins I want to go with. You know, I'm kind of invested in the blue already because I have the blue anodized Zeta handguards, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, there's other colors I'm, I'm thinking about adding into it. But if, if I did the frame, I'd like to, to uh, powder coat the frame in something that really pops out, you know, fluorescent orange, fluorescent green, you know, something that just really pops, maybe a pink, I don't know, something that just really pops off of it. Black out the motor, do the swing arm in a unique color. I don't know, I just have to, I have to play around, do some renders, and see what I like the look of. But overall, ecstatic with the bike, it handles great. I mean, I've had, the fast I've had it, and I know the speedometer is wrong, I know the speedometer is wrong on these bikes a lot. I haven't, I haven't put a speedo healer on it. Um, but I've had the speedometer where the speedometer said uh, 96 miles an hour. So if I'm correct on assumption, you know, most everything is five to seven miles an hour off on these. 
Um, so we'll see what it looks like once I put a speedo healer in it and see where I can get it at. There's some things I want to do. There's an AIS block off kit that I can get for it. The X up servo eliminator once I do the FMF exhaust, a fuel programmer um, to get to get it mapped right and really open the bike up a little bit. I don't know if I want to go to a bigger tooth sprocket to be honest. I mean, really where I'm at with my wheelies is exactly where I want to be at with my wheelies. I don't want to be hitting balance point. I don't mind getting the bike up. I don't need to be walking really long wheelies. It's just fun just to get the front tire off the ground every now and then and at least at that point where I'm getting it, I don't have to worry about it getting away with me um, or looping on me again or anything like that. So I think just where I'm at with my wheelies, I'm happy with them. I can ride them out for, you know, a good two seconds, maybe two, three seconds. And that's all I need. I'm not going to be stupid. I'm, I'm older, man. I'm 43 years old. So the bike is uh, plenty of fun for me. And I'm not, I'm not in a rush to go all crazy hooligan. Not yet anyway. All right, new crush washer. I need to probably start ordering this stuff somewhere else. But you know, I like my local dealership. They've been good to me. So I'm willing to pay the little extra more money, you know, that they charge when you're buying a part. You know, they've been really helpful, point me in a lot of directions. They order everything for me that I want ordered. I'm really happy with my dealership. There's very few things that I will shop elsewhere for. Biggest thing that I have with my dealership is they don't have a lot of selection as far as gear goes and the type of riding that I do. I mean, they have a lot of adventure gear, you know, and then they have a lot of dirt bike gear. I know there's torque values to this. I don't have a torque wrench right yet. So everything is hand tight, not over tight. If I feel like I got a really uh, down on it, I think that's too tight, especially for this stuff right here. Most of these are very small inch pound torque settings. It's one and a half or 1.48 quarts since I replaced the filter. Uh, measure me out another 0.3 let's go ahead and get this in there it's past my full line right now so I'm gonna let it run a little bit and so it's So the bolt that you're looking for to loosen is this guy right here, right? You loosen that guy just a little bit, make sure oil flows out of it, and then you tighten it back up. I've already done that, we're good to go. And then I got to do, adjust some chain slack here. So that'll be my next video, is how to adjust the chain. Dun, dun.